All right guys, this is Justin back with an engineer's perspective and I'm doing a mini review of this knife, the Miyabi Mizu 240 millimeter Kiritsuke. I believe it's, it's exclusively available from Cutlery and More. I believe they list it as a nine and a half inch, but it's 240. Uh, weighs uh, 238 grams or 8.4 ounces. Uh, balance point on it is going to be right here on the blade, just right at the end of the neck there. Makes for a very, very comfortable pinch grip. It's very rounded uh, under the chin here and around this bolster. So you got a really comfortable pinch grip right there. You can kind of see how it just kind of sits right in my hand when I grab the neck like that. So you can really hold on to it comfortably up there. Um, it is about 46 millimeters tall, right here at the heel. It has a two millimeter spine and it, it holds that kind of all the way to uh, this plunge here. And that's very typical of blades of that width because once you start getting below two millimeters, you really start getting a lot of flex in a blade. So usually if they're two millimeters, they'll hold it right until kind of the end of this grind here. Uh, as shown here, it's about 10 thousandths behind the edge at uh, about 11 degrees per side as sharpened. This one did actually come with an issue. Uh, there is a huge recurve in this back half of the blade, so I didn't actually make contact with the cutting board. Um, I chose to fix it myself, so I've actually ground this down on a stone and to fix that so i had to grind up the heel and then flatten it back out so that's why the finish on this is going to look a little bit different than what you'll get from the the factory i spent more time on this side than that so i'm just kind of doing this side over time but i will say zwilling and cutlery and more both offered to replace this knife despite me having done this so their lifetime warranty is solid and they stand behind it um a steel is SG2 or R2 as it's known at 63 Rockwell. Uh, it has that's the core steel, and you've got SUS 410 stainless cladding. Uh, that SG2 is a great powder metallurgy steel, so they're able to put a lot of alloy in it, uh, but still have it be not brittle. So it has a very good performer. Um, I highly recommend it, it's very stainless. Uh, I mentioned the flexibility on it, and you can see I'm applying a decent amount of force and there's not a lot. So there's just kind of an average amount of flex. It feels really good on hard ingredients. Um, when I So in terms of sharpening it, I recommend uh, doing like a 1K finish. So what I recommend is I use this Nano Hone 1K stone right here, it is just finishing with light pressure on that. That gives a great edge. Initially, I was using this 5K Shapton Pro, but I was giving an over-polished edge, and uh, this steel just doesn't really work that great with this polished edge. So I really recommend like a 1K, 3K finish for sharpening. It moves really easy despite that hardness, and it deburs great. So it's a really good performing steel. Miyabi seems to do a really good job with it. Um, Let's look at the cutting profile now. So the Kiritsuke profile is supposed to be very flat, which is what part of what attracted me, and flat it certainly is. So right there, that's it. That's, that's all the rock I get. And you can, if you can hear it, how hard it comes down on that heel. So you can do a little bit of rocking like this if you want, but that's only if you're cutting like, I don't know, something really tiny under there before you start digging that tip in. The way it's really meant to be used is coming straight down. So you can see how that looks there. And it works really great as that kind of like vegetable chopper. Um, just kind of straight flat profile, but still what I really like about this tip that comes down so aggressively is it's very thin. So what I really like to do is if I'll have like an apple, then you can just do that and it just slices right through there. I actually have some apple right here. So like that, and you can see how it just barely stuck and kind of sits in place versus alternative would be up and down like that. Forgive my poor chopping technique. 
but so it's a really great knife. That's kind of the cutting profile. Edge retention on this for me, I'm seeing about three to four weeks if I strop it once a week or so before I really feel like I need to sharpen it. Once again, I'll reiterate, I'm an edge snob, so you will probably get longer edge retention out of it. And I think if you integrate this uh, ceramic honing rod along with the strop, you'll probably get months of use out of this before you need to take it to a stone. Um, but I prefer to strop it occasionally and then take it to a stone every like three weeks. Um, so yeah, that's the knife. Uh, who is this good for? I think this is a great knife if you're looking to kind of up your game. You already have invested in knives. You already know how to take care of knives, but you're looking for that next level of performance. Uh, especially this one in particular for someone who's looking for like a big prep knife. So if you're doing a lot of celery, carrots, big bunches of them where you're just trying to get a lot of work done for your chili or soup or whatever, it's a great, great prep knife. It works great as a slicer on meat. Um, and it's not, you know, super thin laser geometry, so there's still some forgiveness. We don't have to worry about chipping it out so much. So yeah, if you're used to something like this and you wanna, you know, upgrade in performance and get a nice prep knife, then I think this is uh, the one for you. So thank you for watching. This was uh, Justin at the Engineer's Perspective. Have a good one, bye.